Welcome to Evolution. My name is Andre Lawrence, and this is my channel about electric cars from a different perspective. If you've been following my channel for a little while, then you'll know that when I had my Kia Niro EV, I had bought some Tuxmat car mats, and I had said at the time, and I still say they are, the best car mats that I've owned for the last 35 years. Well, this is the 2022 Kia EV6. These are the brand new versions of the Tux mats because they have changed. If you want to find out if they're better or worse or the same, stick around. I'll show you in 10 seconds. I just want to give full disclosure, I purchased these Tuxmat front and rear seat mats with my own money at full price on the website, just like everybody else. I did, however, reach out to them afterwards and say, hey, I placed an order and I'm making another review video. Would you mind sending me the trunk liner for free? And well, they said yes. So I now have the entire set to review, which is the main reason that I asked for this. So with that being said, let's carry on. Now, just before I get to the unboxing, I want to take a quick 30 seconds to show you something very cool that's new with Tuxmat. And if you've got kids, you're going to appreciate this. If you don't have kids, you might want to skip it, but I still think it's cool. The packaging that comes from Tuxmat is now something that can actually not only be recycled, but you can turn it into a car for your kids. I thought this was a really, really cool idea. It's got some wheels drawn onto the side as well as a door. And there's a steering wheel here and you can see how it says build me their instructions on the top of the box so that you can cut this thing up and turn it into a car for your kids. I just thought that was a pretty cool way of using these boxes and giving them a second life before they go to recycling. So with that being said, let's now really continue with the unboxing. Let me show you what comes in the box. You get more than just the mats. There is a little accessory bag and that accessory bag has some clips and retaining things that we'll see if we need for the EV6. I'm not 100% sure. That's the rear mat. We'll look at that after. And we'll look at the front ones. Now, since 2019, Tuxmat has changed the design of these mats slightly. The finish and the design of the mat is different than what it used to be. So I'm just going to pull these out and show you what I mean. Now, this is a little accessory bag. It's got some clips and retaining things in there. We'll look at when I do the installation. There's a little QR code that you can scan so that you can get the installation instructions, but I'll be showing that to you in a few seconds. So what do we have? We've got the different finish of the tux mat. Now, the previous tux mats had a more glossy finish and they were a little bit more smooth than these. These have this little kind of chain link or cross hatching or whatever it is that will probably be a little less slippery when they're wet. And it's got a same kind of rubber heel pad. It looks to be about the same size, maybe a little bit wider. But the other big difference that I noticed is on the backside. Now the previous tux mats had a more of a felt type finish. These are rubberized. Now this has one major advantage is when you're washing these mats, previously with the felt lined ones on the back, they were great probably for sound deadening, but in terms of washing them, it was a bit of a pain because you would have to be very careful when you rub them down with a brush and some chemical and then hose them off, not to get the back of the felt wet. So that was a bit more difficult. And then when you put them on the ground to clean them, well, you ended up having to vacuum the backside. These are rubberized. They've got these little kind of nib thingies. It'll be anti-slip. So I'm guessing this is a better choice for that reason. Now, another difference that I found here is the retaining clips. Now, in the original 2019 version, and that changed, I think, the year after, there was this little pin thing that you had to stick into the carpet and line up with a hole that was in the mat, and it was kind of a watertight thing. Um, it was not difficult to install, but I'm guessing it was more difficult for some people to install. These actually use the factory retaining clips that are on both front and rear seats. So we'll see how that goes when we install them. Let's have a quick look at the passenger side mat. The passenger side mat is very similar to the driver's side, just doesn't have the little rubber heel pad. And one thing that I did notice both front mats, and that is probably because the Kia EV6 has a specific design for the front seat that's low and needs to slide over, is there's no lip on the back of these mats to help you retain the water. Now I'm curious how this is going to be in the winter because if you've got an accumulation of snow, slush, and then it melts and turns into water, when you accelerate, and this thing does accelerate, where's the water going to go? 
Well, we're gonna find out. Does the seat or the floor have an angle that'll prevent that? I don't know. We'll have a look at that very shortly. So what about the rear seat mat? Now, much like with the front mats, there is a lip on the sides, there's an edge in the front and on the rear. This actually goes up under the rear seat. It's got a little opening here for the 110 volt outlet that's in the back seat of my car. And it's got a similar situation, but in the reverse. Now, when you look at these mats, this is the front or basically the back of the front seat right here. And there's no lip because once again, the seat has to slide forward and backward. Now, again, what does that mean for water retention? There is a bit more of an edge here. So I think this will be fine. I'm not quite concerned, not as much as I am with the front. Like I said, I'll find out this winter and we'll get a bit of an idea when I install them in the car. So speaking of installation, let's go do that now. First things first, let's vacuum out the entire car to make sure it's clean. Now the easiest way to remove the mats from the front of the car is with these little clips pointing backwards and the opening be a little bit more forwards. You have to raise the front, slide backwards slightly. Do the same thing over here. So I'll raise the front and slide it backwards and then the mat comes right out. Now just like with the front mats, there are two clips on the rear mat. There's one here and one here. And it's the same thing. What you do is you raise the front of the mat and it lifts the clip right out. Do the same thing here. Lifting the front of the mat and it lifts right out. Now I've got the car all vacuumed up. Let's get the front passenger side mat installed. It is a tight fit. We'll grab the passenger side that does not have the heel pad here. And we're going to slide in the front first. It is a very tight fit. So getting these little clips into their place is a little bit of a thing where you have to stick your hand underneath, but it can be done quite easily. Start by putting the front of the mat all the way up underneath. And then get this little rounded part around the seat track. Do the same thing on the other side of the seat. And now all that's left is to get these little pins into place. I'll get my hand under here, get the front of the pin into the hole, and then press down. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. And that's it. 
It's quite easy to do, and we'll find out if we actually need those little clips that are in that bag once I've got the rest of them installed. Now, let's just get that little label protector off. Do the satisfying peeling. And now let's install the back one. Now, because the rear mat is so wide and has these little flappy ears that protect the sides towards the back of the seats, it's going to be a little more difficult to get it into place, but it isn't that hard. It's just a matter of starting with the front of the mat, and that is this part here, and sticking it under the front seat. So let me show you how. You just line up the front of the mat. And make sure you get it into position where the seat tracks are. And then you've got the little nib here that goes where the seat belt is. You press down on the back portion. And it snugs up underneath where the 110 outlet is. And I'll show you that on this other camera in a second. And you've got this little protection thingy that goes underneath. And then the last thing is getting the factory retainer clip into the hole of the mat. And it's again the same kind of procedure. You stick your hand underneath, angle the front forward, and then slide it in. Now that seems to fit quite nicely. Let me show you a couple little details with this other camera here. The mat actually fits underneath the plastic trim of the 110 outlet. That's this right here. So that'll hold this into place. Now I've also got that retainer clip stuck into place. It was a little more difficult to get in. I had to pull the mat that way, but it did fit. And you'll see that it fits nice and snug around these. There is a bit of a gap here, and I'm guessing that's for when this slides out because you're moving the seat back and forth or whatever something I don't know, but we'll see how that works shortly. Same thing for this one. There is a little bit of extra space here, and it fits nicely around the seat belt, leaving this room to swivel. And it comes up right against the sides here. Now, I may end up using clips to hold this down. I'm guessing that's what that accessory bag is going to be useful for. As for the other side, same kind of situation for this here. You need to bend it over and then get it underneath. Now that's in place, I need to get the retainer clip into its position. And I make sure that this is surrounding the track. The seat belt is behind there. And I do the same thing for this track making sure that it's out of the way. And you can see that the ventilation has some clearance to shoot air over this to heat the feet of the people in the back. And that's it. The last thing to do in the back is to peel the little cover. And now for the last mat, the driver's side with the rubber heel pad that's right here. Let's stick it in the car and see how it fits. Once again, you start by putting the front in and you want to squeeze it under the pedals, just like this. And press down and you'll see that the original factory retainer clips will line up approximately with the mat. Once that's done, and you want to take the factory retainer clip and put it in its place. So you want to start by putting your hand underneath. And then do the same thing with this one. And you make sure that the mat is around the track so that it doesn't interfere with the seat moving forward and backward. 
and you'll notice that it goes pretty high up and protects everything. So the dead petal is completely covered. You won't get snow and slush back under there, much like with the original tux mats that I had in my Nero. So what's left in here is to peel this off like this. So what's in the accessory bag and will it be of any use? Well, I think it will. There are a few clips in here that might be of use to hold things down. So let me just pull these out and show you what we get. Now, essentially, there are two pouches and two kinds of clips that we get with the kit. One is a set of clips that actually clips underneath some of the plastic trim. And the other is some clips that have Velcro on them and that actually stick to the plastic. And we're probably going to end up having to use these Velcro ones because the trim in the EV6 is far too low to get the edge up underneath. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. So let me just open this up and show you up close. These are identical to the ones that I had with the Nero EV. This portion here slides into the side of the mat or the edge of the mat on the top. And then this flat portion goes against the side of the plastic trim and slides underneath. Now these other plastic clips are very similar in terms of the fact that they hold into the uh, mat itself with these little retaining teeth that are here. But on the back side is a piece of Velcro. Now you glue this in the appropriate place, stick this on your mat, and it holds it in place. I'm gonna go have a look at this and see if there's a place where I wanna stick a couple of these to make sure the mats don't move and show you what I've done. I've had a quick look on the inside of the car with the mats installed and there's only one place that I really see where I would need one of these little retainer clips. This might change with time and I'll see as I get used to having them in the car. Essentially, I would put one right here. So this little clip would end up going on the inside here, clip down onto the mat, just like that. And then you peel the little sticker that's on the back of that and then stick it up against the plastic. So that's pretty much what I'm going to be doing to ensure that the mat doesn't interfere with the accelerator pedal. Now what about the fact that I mentioned that the rear of the front mats don't have a lip to retain the water? Now that I've got the mats installed in the car, I've had a little look at them, and although the car isn't like an ice or a gas-powered car where there's a well that's quite deep because there's a tunnel for the transmission and other stuff, um, the EV6 front wells have a tilt that's slightly forward. Let me show you what I mean with this camera here. Now, it's going to be really hard for you to see this, but when I look at this in person, and it's ideal if you see this in person, there is a very, very slight upward slope towards this portion of the mat, meaning that the water should stay in this general area, which has the highest ridge up here and on the side. Now, speaking of that side, you'll notice that the center portion that's flat has this empty space. And I think that makes sense because you want the two mats to be separate and you don't want to have to worry about putting anything in there. The other thing is that they go nice and high to protect the side of this. Now, the one disadvantage is that it's going to hide the LED lights that are in there. So the ambient lighting is going to be covered by the tux mats. Now, when we look at the back side of the mats, as I mentioned, you've got the rails that are here, but the seat sliding forward and backward do not interfere with this and do not get interfered with because there is part of the seat that's quite, it's quite low. Let me see if I can tilt this up for you to see. Now that's kind of low and this stuff kind of rubs up against this when I put the seat forward. Let me show you what I mean. And that is the reason that tux mat had to make the mats flat in the back. So this is not tux mat making a poor design. This is tux mat making a mat that actually fits and goes far up underneath the seat to protect the mats as much as possible. Now I will find out how good they are and how efficient they are at protecting the carpets this winter and I'll be making a follow-up video next year much like I did with my Nero EV. Now with that being said and done, what about the trunk liner? Is the trunk liner just as good or is it of any use? Well let me unbox it and stick it in the trunk and show you what it looks like. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, I didn't really need a trunk liner, but I figured if I was going to be doing a full review of the Tuxmat complete set for the EV6, I might as well get one. 
So let's see what I got with this free trunk liner. As to be expected, it is folded kind of like origami. So let's hope this flattens out nicely. It is quite large. It's made in the same fashion as the actual car mats. There is an accessory bag that comes in this and it fell on the floor, so let me grab that now. So Tuxmat has included a second accessory kit with these little clips and retainers that are identical to the ones that are for the front mats. Now, as with the actual car mats, this has the same texture, the same finish underneath, and it is quite large. Now, the finish is the same, it's identical. So I guess the last thing to find out is how does it fit? So now I've got the trunk ready to install this. Let's see how it slides in, what it covers and what it doesn't. Now the first thing that I noticed when I installed this is that it is a super tight fit in terms of the length. Now, it doesn't seem to want to go completely in and that's because the back lip is stuck up against the back seat. Yeah, that definitely pushes this forward. So this is going to need to have some of those little Velcro clips to hold this into place. that's what you're going to want to do. You want to push up that back edge right up against the seats. Once that's done, that's not going to move. Now that I've got the trunk liner placed with the rear seats up and I've pulled the front lip forward so that it's not being pushed on by the seats, it actually fits quite nicely. I'm sure once I put those little Velcro retainer clips in place, this thing isn't going to move. So let me give you a quick look at what it looks like without those Velcro clips and then I'll stick them on and show you again. So as you can see, it lines up with the edge quite nicely. And once I get the Velcro clips and hold this thing in place, this is going to be perfect. And then you've got a nice alignment with these openings here for the little retainer clips for the net. And then in the back, as I mentioned, if you pull this forward, once the seats are down and then have this in place, it's perfect. Right over here, same thing. And then again, we've got a little net clip that's here that can come out if you pull on that. And then the other one here. So it's a very tight fit, but it's a perfect fit. Has a very nice edge. Has a great finish and look to it. I really like this. And uh, I think it's something I didn't know I needed because I was hauling things around in my car when I was doing renovations in my house using this thing like a truck and I got the back pretty dirty. If I had had this, it would have saved me a little bit of a headache because this is easy to clean. Now let me peel this little sticker off, get those Velcros on, and show you what it looks like. So basically you need to take this little clip here, find a place that's convenient, kind of like that, Okay, now that that's there, I'm going to take another one and install it on this side. Once I've placed this like I need it, so that the edge is at the right place, and this is not too far forward, then I'm going to peel the Velcro. I'm going to sit on one side. And I'll peel the plastic cover from the Velcro so that I can get the sticky part out. And then I'll do the same thing for the other side. And that is not going anywhere. So let's find out what happens when I close the trunk. Stick this camera back here. Hopefully you'll be able to see what happens and hopefully it won't push up against this little lip here. Perfect. 
Hopefully when I look at the video, I'm not going to have that mat all crunched up inside the trunk. <laughs> and having said perfect for nothing, I'm pretty confident that it's fine. Now one thing I noticed, when the trunk popped up, that thing really popped hard. That is not the way it usually pops. And I think these plastic clips are interfering with the trim here and making it more difficult for the trunk to close. So I may end up reconfiguring that. So don't take this as the actual way you really need to install this. I might have made a mistake and I might have to correct this and retain it on the sides instead of retaining it at the back. And I'll test that by pulling those clips off. Now that I've had the tux mats in my EV6 for the last couple days, I figured out exactly where I want those little retainer clips inside the car. And I've also corrected the situation in the trunk for those little retainer clips. And I also have a solution for the sliding around of that little case for the EVSE or the charger and the V2L adapter. Let me show you what I've done. I'll start with the driver's side mat. I did exactly what I said I would do and I kept this clip exactly where it is and I velcroed it right to the side right here so that this cannot come off and interfere with the accelerator pedal in any way. Everything else has remained exactly where it should be. I didn't have to put any clips here. I could, but I don't see a reason why I would. And nothing is being interfered with with regards to the rails. I've moved my seat back and forth. Not a problem. And everything else is perfect. Now let's have a look at the back mat. I ended up using two of these little Velcro sticker thingies on the back mat and I had to make a slight modification, nothing major. I used some scissors and cut this little sticker part, but let me show you exactly what I mean with this camera. If you come in to the back seat, you'll see that I've got the clip right here and it sticks against the plastic that's here. Now, the problem is this clip is longer than the plastic trim that's in here, meaning that this portion would stick to the factory carpet. Now that's not something that I wanted to do. So what I ended up doing was removing this from the actual clip. And then I cut this about a third of the way up. So right about here, making this a square portion that sticks to the plastic without going on to the carpet that's right here. And you can see that right here. And this clip lines up perfectly and stays in place. And I ended up doing the exact same thing on the other side for the rear mat. Now, one thing I didn't do was use any of these clips on the front passenger mat because I didn't see a need. The factory clips hold it in place and everything is pretty much snug and hasn't moved since. Now, what about the trunk? I ended up changing the position of these little clips that I had. I had originally put them right here. I ended up moving them because they were interfering as you saw with the trim and making it more difficult for the trunk to close and then popping really hard when I opened it. So those are now moved to the sides. So let me show you with this camera what I've done. I've essentially removed them from here and I put one clip right here. Now there is a bit of a gap between the side and the plastic trim because this is kind of a folded edge and it's hollow back here. But if you press, and then make it come back out. It looks good and it doesn't move. Now I did the same thing over here, except because there's this giant opening, I ended up putting it right here on the back edge. Now having another back edge seems to hold it in place. I was thinking about putting a couple clips, maybe one here and one on the other side, but I ended up not doing that. We'll see how it goes. I may end up adding them a little bit later. Now, what about the EVSC adapter or the level one charger and the V2L adapter in that case? Let me show you what I did with this camera. Now, essentially, because this is kind of slippery, not really, but for a material like this, it is. And there's no more carpeting for the little Velcro pads under this case to stick to. I put some Velcro sticky pads under there. Now, the biggest problem, and you'll notice, is that one of them just lifted off right there and the other one is kind of half off. So I'm not sure about long-term use and how they're gonna stay, but if I don't pull the case out, which I kind of never do, and I leave it in place, once those Velcros are stuck to the bottom, this thing doesn't move. 
So in theory, my problem is solved by having some Velcro strips stuck to that. And in a worst case scenario, I could maybe try putting some more aggressive glue. I wouldn't want to damage this, so I don't think I'll be doing that. I'll just see how it goes and figure it out on the fly. Are tux mats still the best car mats you can buy for your car? Are they better than the 2019 version? Well, I can honestly say that the 2022 version of the tux mats is definitely better than the 2019 version for a couple of reasons. Now, the first reason is the fact that the bottom of the tux mats in the new versions are not made of felt. This means that when I take them out, put them on the ground and wash them, I don't have to worry about A, getting the back of them dirty. I also don't have to worry about getting water on them because it's rubberized underneath these mats. So that's definitely a bonus. The second advantage that I see is the cross hatching or that chain link finish or whatever that texture is will make these mats less prone to slip. So definitely a positive note on that side of things. Now with regards to the fit in terms of the car, they're definitely a perfect fit for the EV6, just like with my Nero and my wife's Soul. They fit perfectly around everything. One thing I didn't show you was the opening in the back of this mat in the back seat, right where the rails are for the front seats. That little opening is there on purpose. When this front seat slides back, it actually has a bit of metal that pokes out. So when this seat is all the way back, it backs up, fills that gap that's there and kind of just touches the mat. And I'll put that up here somewhere on the screen for you to see. As for the trunk liner, now the trunk liner is something that I didn't know that I actually needed. Not that I need it, but I kind of need it. If I had had a trunk liner in my car when I was doing renovations in my house, I wouldn't have had a ton of wood chips and little spikes stuck into the material of the trunk floor that's kind of carpeting but not really it was a huge pain to vacuum out i've vacuumed it tons of times to finally make it look good now with this trunk liner in place that would have avoided all that and not only that the trunk liner has raised edges so if you put something in the trunk and it moves around it'll bump up against the tux mat edge as opposed to bumping into the plastic and maybe scratching the plastic so definitely an advantage on that side having the front rear mats as well as the trunk liner in the car also add some extra sound deadening. Now this is entirely subjective. I have no numbers to back this up, but the Kia EV6 is already a very quiet car, even when you sit in the back seat. But having the trunk liner and the front and rear mats installed, I could swear that it's that much teeny little bit much quieter. So an added bonus on that side. One of the disadvantages to the trunk liner though, and this is important to note, especially if you have those little plastic clips that I have stuck towards the back of the mat, if ever you need to access the floor, the subfloor of the trunk, and I keep a bunch of junk under there, uh, that means that you have to unvelcro those clips, raise the liner, then raise the trunk. It's a little bit of more of a fuss to get into. So just keep that in mind when you decide whether you want the trunk liner or not. Another important note is that Tuxmat doesn't make car mats for all years of vehicles. This is something that seems to have changed in the last couple of years since I bought mine. I could swear that they went back at least five years, but it seems that Tuxmat only offers car mats for cars that are more recent, I think within the last three years of production. So this may be disappointing to you because these mats are still by far the best mats that I've ever owned but you can't get them for an older vehicle. So unfortunately, you're out of luck if you have an older car. You may have noticed the Evolution logo that I've got here. Well, if you want to be part of the Evolution, you don't have to own an electric car. You can buy a t-shirt on my evolution.ca website. I've got them in black, blue, and gray in various sizes. So feel free to check that out. Now, speaking of links that I'll have in the description below, I've also got a Facebook Evolution page where I share articles from around the world. I've got an Instagram account where I post EV and non-EV related pictures. And I've also got a Ko-fi account. So if you feel like buying me a coffee on Ko-fi, well, there you go. And if you already have, thank you very much. I really appreciate your support. Now, if you do like this video, please click on that thumbs up button. It tells YouTube that you like it and helps them share it to other people. And if you really like this video, please click on that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. It tells me that you like my video and also helps you know when I make new videos and post them because I have zero posting schedule. And once again, thank you for taking the time to watch my video. If you've been following my channel for the last few years, then you'll, then you'll know it's starting already. If you've been following my channel since 2019, then you'll know that I had bought Kia Tux, Kia Tux mats. Yep. 
Welcome to Evolution. My name is Andre Lawrence, and this is my channel about electric cars from a different perspective. Electric cars? Electric cars. Okay. I want to give full disclosure with regards to the tuck mat. Tuck mat. I did purchase these front and rear tuck mat seats. Seats. <laughs> Happily, they decided to send me the trunk liner mat for free. So I, uh, 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 I ruined it on the last part. But I figured if I'm going to do a tux mat review and they've got the entire set, I might as well get it. And there you go. It's a ramble, ramble, ramble. The design is generally the same thing. They diff That's total shit. I'm going to have to start over. So now that I've got the tux mats installed for the last couple... Nope. So now that I've had the tux mats installed in my EV6 for the last few days... Two days. I figured out exactly where I wanted to have those little clips that I was talking about or that I showed you ah, on the back mat and I'll show you exactly what I did because I had to modify I had to modify now one thing that I didn't do is use one of these clips on the front passenger carpet or now one thing I didn't do is use any of these clips on the front passenger seat <sighs> to open hard or close hard and it wasn't very crap that's all crap 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 so how do the cut the cux mats? How are the cux mats? Are they better than the old ones? I think that the 2022 versions of the tux mats are better for a couple reasons. The first reason is the fact that the back of the mats isn't made of felt. Why do I keep looking down? Now the first reason is the fact that they're not felt on the back. I keep looking down. Why do I keep looking down? It's bad. Are tux mats still the best tux mats around? Uh. So how do these 2022 tux mats compare to the old 2019 versions? Are they still the best tux mats in the world? <laughs> yeah, they are the best tux mats in the world because they're the only tux mats around.